Hi, and welcome to the video presentation on comparison of the Gospels for Jesus' first act of ministry. The reason why this is important uh, for us to take a look at is because it, it means something significant when we say that Jesus was baptized, went out, uh, well, in most of the stories, went out into the wilderness, and, and then when he came back, that's when we mark the time that he began his public ministry, the first things he actually did that were out there for the world to see. And the thing that each of the gospel writers is going to portray as Jesus' first act is going to indicate for us a huge part of what is most important to them about what Jesus does in his ministry. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the Gospel of Matthew. In the, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, it's interesting to note in chapter 4, we have Jesus uh, driven out into the wilderness. After his baptism, he faces his, his temptations. And then after returning from the temptation, he, he comes, he calls his disciples to follow him, he collects them around, and then he goes out to the people in Galilee. He goes out to the synagogues and travels the synagogues and begins teaching. He serves as a, as, as a teacher. And in verse 23, we say that, that he was teaching them and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. He cured disease and sickness. But then in chapter 5, he immediately goes out and he begins what we call the Sermon on the Mount, which is a collection of Jesus' teachings that we, that we can see what Matthew did was he, he took the different teachings that had been associated with Jesus, put them all together into sort of a, a cohesive sermon, and it really mirrors this image of, that we have of Moses up on the mountain coming down to teach the people. So we have this image of Matthew as the great teacher and mimicking Moses. Compare that to the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus doesn't begin his ministry until John the Baptist's ministry ends. He comes out, he gathers his disciples, and in chapter 1, uh, verse 23, he says, while he was in the synagogue, the story focuses on the healing of the man with the unclean spirit. So it's not his sermons or his teaching that causes word to spread about him, but primarily this healing, the healing event. And this act starts off a series of miracle stories with lots of healings um, going to, to other places. And, and it... And it features in a similar way than it does in Matthew's stories, but the focus, again, is more on the healing, less on the teaching. Uh, and note that it doesn't end with the Sermon on the Mount. It continues on with more miracle stories. Then we have the Gospel of Luke, where after the temptation in the wilderness, uh, it has no mention of his, him going and collecting his disciples first. It has Jesus going out to Nazareth where he's from, and beginning to preach to the people. And in chapter 4, verse 18, it has his first, <clears throat> his first preaching where he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So this is... Primarily, first and foremost, a, a story about him coming to free the oppressed, being their savior, and, and primarily being, being a prophet to them, a prophet to his land, much in the same way that the Old Testament prophets were prophets in their, to, their, uh, to the land. Finally, we have the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, of course, being a little bit different, has him, no temptation in the wilderness story at all, but he does go and he calls his disciples. And then in chapter 2, Jesus' first public act is at the wedding at Canaan. His mother says to him, because, uh, because they're out of wine, you know, Jesus, my boy, you've got to do something. And he points out to her in sort of a rebuking fashion, my time has not yet come. Uh, but then he does end up performing his first public miracle, which is the turning the water into wine. And the thing that's really most notable here is that it's Mary's belief in Jesus that causes this to happen. She believes in him even when he hasn't come to do something. She has faith in him that he will come and he will fix this problem for them. Uh, in this time, there's no mention of Joseph, uh, her, her husband, so she was probably already looking to Jesus as a, as a figure of somebody to, to look up to to sort of help solve the problems, and she didn't doubt for one moment 
that he had the ability to go and do this. And in fact, he did end up doing it, even when he pointed out that it's not what he came to do. So all four of these mark very different stories to how Jesus began his ministry, and yet each of them really touches on this aspect that each of the gospel writers had of Matthew, Jesus as the teacher and the new Moses, Mark as this person who has uh, come to, to give himself, has lots of healing stories. And then Luke, we have Luke as uh, Jesus as the Savior, and John, again, with the focus of Luke, uh, the focus of Jesus as being the person who we are supposed to believe in and give ourselves over to. So thank you very much for, for watching this presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.